What's good, people? Here we go again. So I got a uh, track here. I called it initially Summer Bounce, but what I've been writing, uh, well, uh, well, I don't want to get that idea out, but I have a artist who actually likes this track, and I'm gonna go ahead and uh, bounce this and get this ready for him to write to. And you know who you are, guy. So you know I don't like to wait, wait, wait forever. If you're gonna do it, let's go ahead and roll. Let's rock and roll. But uh, I'm just gonna break down this track. This is like a little springtime bounce or summertime bounce. And uh, I'm just gonna break the track down and show you some of the stuff that I use to create this track. And I'll just play a little bit of the track. I'll go to the, I actually got a bridge and change up and everything. So here's the main hook right here. And here's the bridge. And I call this to turn around. Let's see what this is. All right, so let's start here. We got the kick drum. Let's see what we use here. All right, the good old uh, Empire Breaks. I'll solo. I'll solo that kick. And I really wanted this track to be a mixture of, you know, maybe the little bit of the late 80s to the mid 90s and the, the sound of it actually. The uh so you can hear the distortion and the noise. So we have the uh, Scarby pre-bass from Contact, from Native Instruments. This is one of my go-tos. A lot of times I'll do these parts and then I'll let the, uh, I'll try to hire, as in pay a bass player, uh, another musician to come in and just lay down and put their own feel on, on it and actually give them, you know, writing credit as well. So, um, but, you know, kind of hard sometimes to find people to work with. But uh, yeah, so I use this bass right here on a majority of my live sounding tracks. Okay, so. All right, and for the next track, we got Stax PF, but let's see what instruments that is. So originally you can see the name of this session right here is called Stacks, but and my intention was to use all the all stack stacks instruments. Uh once again, Toby Meeks over there. Uh, she uh put me on to this to this sound library here. I mean it's it's very unique and it's it's tons and tons and tons of sounds in here. 
So if you ever, uh, I think it was only like 40 bucks or something, $39, but it, it comes with tons and tons of uh, presets that are unique. And I haven't heard these sounds before or anything like them. So stacks, I use that. You can hear all the all like the artifacts and everything in it that they put into it. Okay, all right, so let's go to the next sound here. Stacked roads. I use stacked again. Okay, and I just had to confirm myself. I didn't even know it. I used the same sound on both of these tracks off the roads. And yeah, if you play it different, it just sounds different. Okay, next track. Keys stacked. And what did I use here? Oh, ignition keys. Okay, all right. Again, Native Instruments Contact. This is an amazing instrument. It has keys for days and not just your regular keys. And you, you can build these sounds if you just combine the right uh, instruments or VSTs, but it's already done here. Then you can adjust the effects and do all kinds of stuff with it. And then you can actually save it. Okay, then I use 40 keys here. So, so that's from 40's very own as you are as you should know or might not know 40 uh, is Drake's main producer uh, he got an endorsement from Native Instruments deservingly and sampled all his keyboards and synths and programmed made sounds and created a whole library contact library of his sounds and of course we got the hi-hat I just kind of cycle through these and that's coming from the Yep, you guessed it. That is coming from the uh, Empire Breaks. Hear how dirty that is? All right, that's this exactly what I wanted. This says clunk. Let's see what this is. Okay, yep, that's from here as well. All right, what's next? All right, nice little crash. That's coming from Empire Breaks as well. Uh, Congos, that's coming from Empire Breaks as well. I just added that in at the end there. Give it a little bit of change up. Congos or bongos? Which one is it? Did I get it right? All right, sometimes I don't think about the difference between congos and bongos until I actually see it. So, uh, but yeah, that's all the tracks. And... So the the next thing I did when I I created all my patterns, and then I chained them together. I put everything in song mode. So let me go to song mode. 
And after I put it in the song mode, I uh, exported it as a sequence. So while it's in regular song mode, you can export and bounce down the actual song the way it is. If you want to separate all your tracks, you have to export or convert to a sequence, okay? So a couple of times, this is a, a bug that's inside of the MPC. The first few times that I did it, everything was all bust up and, and, and just cluttered and I don't get that issue often, but it happened a few times. But um, I rebooted my computer and just took a little break. And when I exported it again, everything came out. When I converted the song to a sequence, everything came out right. So let's go to that sequence and take a, a little quick listen. And then I'm gonna try export those files, which I already did. And I'm assuming that they came out right. I didn't go back and listen. It was like really storming and lightning that day. Although, although I got uh, surge protectors and all kind of uh, safety measures for electricity and uh, shock and things like that, things that can blow up a studio, I still turned everything off and, and just I just cut off all power to my equipment. All right, so let's go to that sequence that I bounced down. Let's see if it plays back correctly. If not, this is something that they definitely need to fix in 3.0 or whatever the next version of MPC is because it's very frustrating because uh, I, I do like the range. And then just do one lo whole long uh, track of each sound and then just dump it inside my software. Then I can fine tune it if I want to, you know. Uh, but let's uh, take a listen here. Okay, so this is the sequence right here. And let's see if it plays back correctly. I think I got the right one, let's see. All right, so it's playing before it was all jumbled up and playing the wrong tracks and everything. So that has to be uh, something in the coding. Uh, I do coding as well. So, hey, Akai, y'all need some help. But I definitely can tell you what's wrong uh, or the behavior that we don't like. And so what I did, I exported all the sounds, okay? Because I was in controller mode. I could have retracted everything back in through my hardware. but we're going to use, uh, I want to keep this kind of old school sounding. So let me just go ahead and save this. Okay. And then let's uh, go ahead and quit. Oh, wrong program. I don't want to record. Close Ecamm. Let's close MPC. Save it first and then quit. Then we're going to open up. I'm going to use a UAD Luna in this instance here. All right, so let's go to our Luna. I'm going to screen so you all can see. Now, it's probably an update. What they do, I do like the fact that they do update often. And if there's an update, I'll uh, pause the video. And I just loaded all the RK multimedia stuff. And... Okay, it logs you in because it uses a lot. Okay, I do have the update, but I can 
go here. I think I did it before already. Let me move you over here so you can see. All right. Let's create a track, a session, a project runner. I call it Bounce 97 because it is 97 beats per minute. All right, I know I know my tempo is 97. You can change this after the fact. What I do like about Luna, you can change the tempo and everything time stretches. And it is, uh, the algorithm is actually pretty amazing. Uh, with Pro Tools, it's a few more extra things that you have to do. But uh, they'll get there soon, I hope. So let's create. All right, so I'm going to go to my same way. File, import audio. Okay. I'm gonna go to my main drive and I'm gonna go find Bounce 97. Okay, so I'm gonna take all these. Command A or Shift. Select all, open. All right, so it is Processing all my tracks in here. Should start from the beginning. Let's just do a little quick pay playback. And what I do like about this, out the gate, everything is set up for uh, to work like Pro Tools. All right. So let's see what we got here. Turn it down. So it sounds like my bass is missing. My uh, kick drum is missing. But let's see. Let's uh, get these tracks named and figure out what's there and what's not there. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and do that and I'll be right back. All right, I'm back. So what I did discover was um, the kick drum is missing, but that's one of the bugs um, for some reason. Maybe I had it muted. I don't know, but we're going to open it back up and I'm just going to export the kick by itself. So no need to panic. Just open up MPC again. And I'm going to go here. I'm going to load recent and let's open up that session or that song. And I'm going to go to that sequence for the song. All right. And I just watched Miami make the eighth seed. And I was really, really rooting for Chicago because I am a Celtics fan and Miami is just a problem. I swear that they are a problem, but you know, that's another story. So let's go here and here's the song. All right, and let's go to the kick. This is real simple. I'm gonna go to the kick by itself. All right, I'm going to double click this waveform here. And what it's doing is bouncing down just that kick by itself on that particular track. This is another way to get your tracks out of uh, the MPC or, you know, the MPC software. And once that's done, I'm just going to take that and drag it over here. All right, and it's kick. Okay. And let me just play it just to see. If... Yeah, and it's hard too. It's pretty loud. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and quit MPC. I can simply just drag that into my DAW, no matter what you're using. Okay. Mm -hmm. 
So let's play that to make sure it's right. If not, I gotta go back. All right, so we got that. So what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna color code my tracks here. I like my drums to, uh, in the different types of tracks to be different colors. Uh, just helps me when I arrange them. I also put them in order from the drums and then from to the other instruments from low frequency to high, high to the high frequency. All right, and be right back. All right, cool. So we got that done, and I just basically just color coded everything just to help me when I'm putting things in order. So all my drums up here first. All right. And let's see. All right, so I'm gonna go to this wonderful mixer here, which is, actually this is the console. Let me move this. Okay, so this is the UAD console that's running the software in the back. But once you have Luna open, Luna takes over the console, okay. So, but what I do love about this mixing board here is just exactly what it is. I mean, this is great. So, uh, you have your input section, you have your other utility section. And then one of my favorite things is the actual console. You can load up an API channel strip here. Um, I think they have another one ready, but I know the API is ready. And I actually tried the demo. I'm gonna actually buy it here soon. Uh, UAD, holler at me. All right, so you have your insert section here, but over here you have your tape section. So first thing I'm gonna do, let's just go ahead and balance these tracks out a little bit and make sure I'm not clipping on my master fader here. All right, so I'm gonna solo my drums. And for some reason my controller here is, offline all right and i'll come back to that later but let's just solo and make sure we're not clipping anywhere and just get a nice little balance So my, my tracks are pretty loud when I exported them. So I can actually go into the waveform and reduce the uh, the actual volume of the waveform just to give myself that room. And I will probably go back and rebounce that later, but I think it'll be okay.
Now what I'm gonna do here, I'm gonna go ahead and add just tape all the way around to the uh on all of my tracks mainly. But so now yeah, though like I showed in uh, I did another video where it was um who was that? IK Multimedia has a, a lot of tape emulators. Waves has a lot of tape emulators. Of course, UAD does. It's standalone, but inside of this doll here, it actually comes with the doll. You get a free version and you get a paid version. The free version actually sounds pretty good, so I did get the uh, one of the packages. So the oxide is the one that you get for free. But let's show you how that sounds. All right. So. And you can add more takeaway. So what it does, it kind of warms it up. If you haven't heard a uh, recording on tape, just go back and listen to some of the music back in the, uh, back in the day, I will say hmm, maybe the 60s, 70s, 80s, and even uh, a lot of the 90s. And even now, since vinyl has made a comeback, a lot of um, records are being recorded as well as into Pro Tools, and they, they also do a pass into tape too as well. But then they kind of blend it or just use one or the other or both or however they mix it. But uh, I'm just going to add tape to all these tracks just to kind of bring them out a little bit um, before I do any kind of serious mixing on this. But I will uh, just do that now. And I once I do a mixing video, actually when we record the actual song, I will uh, share that session with you. All right, so now I got tape on all of the tracks here. Set it at a minimum level. Just want to add a little bit of saturation to the uh, to all the tracks. Now there's an option for the master tape, and I haven't gotten it yet, and I may not need it. But what I'm going to do is just uh, just do a little quick two minute mix, just to add a little, just to you know, maybe a little bit of EQ and a little bit of compression on some of the tracks. And let me just see how fast I can do this. All right, so I'm gonna go. Here we have our, of course, we got our tape section and I'm gonna concentrate on the inserts. And you also have a, a unison section, but we're not recording directly, I just import it. So I'm gonna go to my uh, insert section here. I'm gonna hit the plus sign. And then I'm going to hit, uh, say I want a compressor, I got my universal. I'm gonna go to the soft tube CB for the kick. Okay, so now I got the, the uh, API preamp just going across the tracks here. Then the other thing, what I was looking for earlier, I could not remember the name, is the Tube Tech CL1B. Okay, so this is a very good compressor. And it's, it's you can make the slightest turn on the knob and it just kind of overdoes it or can just be too much, but we're just gonna just play with it a little bit here. See what I mean? It's just barely grab it there. And generally, I put my EQ before my compressor, so I'm uh just put that there. Let's go here. And what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna cut just a little bit of the bass out.
So I'm gonna do a little bit of reverb here. Uh, I'm gonna create a sin track. And we just take all these off solo. And I'll just do this and then I'll just pause it and tweak it. And then I play everything back once I'm done. So let's go here. Um, we wanna go to track. And then you wanna go to new tracks. And then from there you just choose what type of track you want. I want a bus. Okay, and I'm gonna call it reverb. Right. And you can see the reverb is here, but you know, back like, like in the day, I'm gonna put this at the end here. All right. And then you go down here to your sins, and then you just choose to send it to the reverb. All right, and there's your sin level here. Okay. You can add more sins and whatnot. All right, so let's go here. And then one of my favorite reverbs. It's going to be um, this one here. Okay, so if I just solo those two tracks. Last thing I'll tweak in front of you is the, uh, I'll pull up a bass amp and mess around with that. And uh, let's see. tweaking be right back all right so i got a quick tweak on it i don't do it like all the way and this is going to be instrumental but i just kind of get it to sound good so that uh when it's time to record you know it's really not much left for me to do i want to leave room for the vocals um so once we get the vocals in there i'll probably tweak it a little bit more just to you know make sure that everything blends so i got my favorite meter up which is the uh, T-Rex meter. Okay. And just make sure we're not going too too loud here. And UAD Luna has a pretty good meter as well here. Plus I can see on the interface. <laughs> so I don't have the master tape, but I do have some tape plugins, so I'm gonna experiment a little bit with IK Multimedia's tape plugin. Okay. And this is one of them right here. Okay, 
So this is what you would come out of the mixer, all your multi tracks, and you would record to a two track to this tape right here. Go down here, and you can see all the, the tape emulators that they have here. Which this is pretty impressive. It all comes with the Total Max. It's up to 4.0 now. And it's right around 700 bucks for 670 gigs. And versus Native Instruments Complete 14 Ultimate, which is about fifteen, sixteen hundred dollars Okay. Or about 500 if you have the previous versions. The previous full versions, you can get an update for about 500 And depending on which version you have, it could be a little bit more. But not only does the IK Multimedia Total Max, it comes with uh, great instruments and everything. It comes with like a great palette of plugins that you can use. So here are all these tape machines right here that you can experiment with. Okay. The presets here right now is off. When I press this button here, it turns on like that. You will hear the difference. Okay. I'm gonna run through them here, and then I'll choose one. Then, if I really want to get greedy, I have API. I have a uh, Neve summing here, so we can kind of go back and forth and compare. But um, probably not when I bounce it down. I'm not gonna add anything because. You know, maybe the, the singer want to write to it. I don't want to like overdo it. If he record with me, it's cool. But if he take it somewhere else, I don't want to get him a track that's already pretty much mastered. Uh, you want to leave room for everything. I like how that actually sounds. So let's turn that off for now. Let's go to my uh, Neve Summon and see if we can hear any uh, anything significantly different or, you know, maybe there's a preference. So I do have the Neve Summon with the uh, Creative Bundle. All right. And okay, so I have 14. DSP chips to handle UAD plugins. Now, you know you have the native option as well now. So with the native option, you can use the native um, version of the plugins or you can use your, your DSP. I still like the DSP because it's still freeing up my computer, but my computer is pretty powerful and I got the Mac Studio on the way as well. But right now there's iMac Pro, which is, uh, I bought it in 2020, brand new. And it's still a relatively young computer as far as being in use because I bought it brand new from uh, Apple. And you should have saw me walking out of Linux Mall with it. Linux Mall is, if you heard about Linux Mall in Atlanta, I just don't really go there. But I did have the security guard and the, actually the police escorted me out to my car. And uh, I was able to load. They were the only ones who had it in stock. So I went down there and picked it up. 
at six o'clock at night, which was kind of dangerous. But it was a maybe a Wednesday night or something. And uh, but you know, you still just gotta be careful. So I got my knees some again. Let's play around with this a little bit. I turned them on, turn both of them on at the same time. This actually sounds pretty good right here. All right, so let me just add the tape to that. And I already got tape on the actual individual tracks. And let's just put tape on the master fader now, along with the emulation of the knee summing. Kind of sounds real good in combination of one another. But let's uh let's see. The only thing I would do is it's really not mastering. I would just put like a limit on the end just to keep from clipping. The uh, other thing I do, I just turn it down. But I turn down the main volume of the of the tape plug in and then the actual summing device. Just turn it down a little bit because I don't want this going too high and I haven't really done anything to it uh, as far as so-called mastering or anything okay so normally i would go to you know one of the l one the two or the three uh limiters for waves okay which is cool been the go-to for the last i would say 10 12 years and again not to really master but to just just kind of level out and keep it from clipping and just kind of keep it steady keep the volume uh, together and whatnot. So what we'll do instead of using waves, which I still love waves, you know, no shade the waves. I'm glad that everything is back to the perpetual licenses and everything because I can't see doing that, that uh, subscription thing for a bunch of plugins that I'm not going to use. And it's probably literally, let me see, one, two, I'm going to say it's about four four to six plugins that I use from Waves on a regular basis. And how many do they have? Like 90 or something or more? A hundred? I don't know. I lost count. Um, it's probably about, I'll, I'll be modest and say it's about six plugins that I use from Waves on most mixes. But I would say on all mixes, it's about four plugins that I use. In the L series, it's one, the L1, the two, three, Usually they go on the, uh, the end of the master fader. I may use it as a bus compressor or whatnot. Um, but in this case right here, let's go to IK Multimedia. And let's take a look at this. Uh, you can use the, the classic clipper, which is pretty good. Now, what I do like about the IK Multimedia products is that they actually emulate the hardware. Okay. So I can use the SSL bus or the, um, the bus compressor for UAD. But in this case, let's just go to, let's see if, here, if I can find it.
I can remember the name of it. I know it when I see it. Well, you have a quad limiter right here, which works pretty good, but it's a stealth limiter. All right, this is a pretty good device right here. So basically it's already, I got um, output ceiling right here. Let's set that to just not a zero, but 0.3, you know, cause we're not really, digital audio is different from, you know, back in the day we used to get everything to hear that, you know, cut off at zero, but let's do it a little bit before then. around in the car listening and just writing you know i wouldn't really try to master this track i would just make it sound good while uh just playing in the car so i'm gonna turn it back down here and i'm gonna go to my sound and just bring that down just a little bit and my input just bring that down just a bit i don't want, really want it to be too loud <laughs>
Okay, so yeah, I'll uh do a little fade out on it later. But yeah, that's uh making a beat with the NPC software using contact. Yeah, for the majority of those instruments, I didn't use any NPC drums at all. I used the the contact Empire Breaks for my drums. Uh, still sound great. Like it has that that old crusty feeling to it, which is which is a good thing, you know. Just add, and then we dropped it into into uh, Luna, and we use this mixer. You know, it's unique mixer functions console mixer. We added tape saturation to each track. I ran each sound through an API emulation. Okay, this is really not the top of the line when I've been kind of debating on whether I want to go there and go ahead and get the, the actual channel strip. But I did try the uh, the demo. So if you go to console here, I can view it in the store because I already used my demo. But if you go here, view it in the store, uh, you can see what it looks like. So it actually loads this. It loads up an API console directly onto your onto each channel. Okay, so I don't know. We'll see. I might uh jump on it. I don't know. I, I got the SSL and all kind of plugins that I bought from UAD that I want to try. I can actually just build my own. But you know, just having it right there in that console strip it, it sounds pretty good but uh yo, thanks for watching this one like subscribe comment let me know what you think about luna just getting started on it um well i've been on it for a couple of years now but like really getting serious seriously with it um you know i'm a pro tools guy but i, I do like to use different dolls and everything um uh, and you know, who knows what stays in Luna or what goes in the Pro Tools at the end of the day. You know, the labor don't care. Sometimes they do. And I know I said the only reason you need Pro Tools, really, but really, honestly, you do need Pro Tools to get into the door of some of these uh, major studios or, or to deal with um, particular artists and and to be able to move around in the business. But uh, I will say Luna is giving Pro Tools a run for his money. It comes with the subscription and it comes for free if you have a universal audio interface. So, uh, yeah, if you want to try it out, just give it a shot, you know, free. Now they do have a lot of add-ons that you can buy, uh, but it does have a nice little manager here. You can see I got everything up to date. It'll tell you if something needs to be updated. You can see your products here, what's installed. I got their, uh, mini mood. Where are you? Okay, so I need to take a look at that, but you can discover. Uh, just go back to see where everything, you know, what's what. So analog essentials, you can get probably all these plugins right here about two grand if you bought it, bought, if you bought them separately. But if you get the bundle, of course, you know you save. So got your instruments and extensions, and I do have this Moog, mini Moog here, or Moog whichever way you want to pronounce it. Um, yeah, it's pretty, pretty tight. And I'll demonstrate time stretching later. You just change the tempo and it will time stretch the whole session for you. And you know, you can change these, the warp functions, but uh, you know, we'll get into the later. And again, thank you for watching, subscribing, comment, sharing. See you on the next one. Peace out.